Review number three is going to be talking about functions, piecewise functions, and, and all of that. So we'll start by just doing some output stuff. The output value is when you just plug in. So we're literally just going negative two parentheses, negative six squared plus seven. So we'll input that into Desmos, negative two parentheses, negative six squared plus seven. And that gets us negative 65. Number two, f of zero is negative six, f of one is three, which of the following could be the function? Well, let's test each, each one out. So if I plug in zero for x squared minus six, that does give you negative six. If I plug in one for that, that gets you negative five. We want it to be three, so it's not gonna work there. So we'll test it out with x squared minus seven. Uh, neither of those are correct with that one, so it's not gonna be B, C. Three X minus seven. So three, zero minus seven. And three, one minus seven. As you can see, neither of those get you negative six or three. So it's gonna be the last one. Nine X minus six. And that gets you negative six and three. So it's gonna be D. All right, number three, if G of X is one half X plus eight and H of X is one half X plus two, what's the value of G of H of negative eight? We start on this problem by doing H of negative eight. So we're gonna plug in negative eight in here. So that's gonna be one half times negative eight minus two. So let's see what we get there. And our value for h of negative eight is now negative six. So this question now is what is g of negative six? So we're gonna take our, our new evaluated function and plug in negative six in place of the x for g. So g of negative six is gonna be one half negative six plus eight. And you get five. Number four, um, g of h of four. So we're gonna plug in four for h. So two times four plus three. We can do that one in our head. That's gonna be eight plus three, that's 11. So it's gonna be g of 11. So we're gonna say negative nine times 11 plus two. And that's negative 99 plus two should be negative 97. And there you go. Question five, piecewise functions, what's the value of f of zero plus two f of negative two minus f of six, negative six, f of six. So we'll start by the zero. Zero is, is between negative two and three. So we plug in zero into here. So f of zero is zero squared minus three. That's zero minus three, so that's gonna be negative three. f of negative two, negative two is less than or equal to negative two. So f of negative two is two times negative two plus eight. That's gonna be negative four plus eight. So that should be four. F of six, six is greater than three. So we're gonna plug in six into here. So F of six is the square root of six plus three, which is the square root of nine, which is three. So working all that out, you have negative three plus two times four minus three, so that's gonna be five minus three, 
and that should be two. You can check all, test all that in your calculator if you want. And then question six on the first page. A function is shown below, another piecewise function. So let's see, identify what goes plugged into where. Negative three is less than or equal to negative three. So we're gonna plug that into here. Now this one's a little more complicated. So I'm gonna use the calculator. So f of negative three is negative, parentheses, negative three squared, plus two, parentheses, negative three. That gets us 15, negative 15. So I have that number. And then we're gonna plug in negative one. That's gonna be between negative three and four. So I'm gonna plug in negative one into this function, f of negative one equals two parentheses, one third times two times negative one. Now two times negative one is negative two. So that's two parentheses, one third, to the negative two power. If you were to put it in parentheses with the negative one, um, you can do that too. So either way that gives you 18. So that's gonna be 18, two times 18 up there. And then finally with the four, we're gonna, we know four is greater than or equal to four. So we're gonna plug in four for 2x minus 5 over x minus 7. So f of 4 is 2 times 4 minus 5 over 4 minus 7. That's 8 minus 5, which is 3. 4 minus 7 is negative 3, so it should be negative 1. We can also verify that. Use the fraction bar first. And you can see that does simplify to negative one. So if we have all these numbers, we can go back and evaluate this expression. 15, negative 15 plus two times 18 minus negative one. And that gives us 22. That was a tough one. So take a moment to write all that down and then we'll go on to the next part. Okay, part two is talking about inverses. That's where the X and Y values switch. So from tables, when it has that little notation, that little notation with negative one, that means inverse. So we really wanna think of this as a y value. So our goal is to look for where y equals three and find the value of x. So when y is three, the value of x is four. So that's actually gonna be positive four. So anytime you have that inverse notation, that little negative one, look at that as a y, give me the x value. For functions, to get the inverse of functions, switch the x and the y and solve for y. So we're gonna subtract five from both sides. That's x minus five equals six y. And we're gonna divide everything by six. So y is gonna be x minus five all over six. And that's the same thing actually as um, answer choice D. So x minus five, that's one, one six x minus five six. Oops, not d, um, c. Because that five's gotta be divided by six as well. So it's actually gonna be c. Um, for number three, um, for f of x equals x squared minus 10, uh, again, x equals y squared minus 10. Add 10 to both sides. This time you got a square root 
the side. So it's going to be the square root of x plus 10 equals y. Square root of x plus 10. With exponential functions, the inverses are logs. So this is going to look like um, what we'll do is we'll say x equals 7 minus 4 to the x power, or to the y power, excuse me. Now what we'll do is we'll take the log of both sides. So we'll take the log, and the base is going to be, my apologies, we actually have to get the 4 to the y power solved first. So we're going to subtract the 7 from both sides. So it's negative 4 to the y power. Then we're going to divide by negative 1. So when I do x minus 7 divided by negative 1, it's actually going to be the same as 7 minus x. So 7 minus x is 4 to the y power. Now we can do the log. So the log of base 4, 7 minus x, is equal to y. So we want to write that in log form. Log base 4 of 7 minus x equals y. And remember the change of base formula that can also be written as log of 7 minus x over log of 4. So it's actually going to be c. Number 5 is going to be very similar to that. So again, we'll do x equals 1.5 to the x to the y plus 4. Subtract 4. Take the log of both sides. So that'll that'll just give you y here. And then you can write that as a change of base. So you'd say log of x minus 4 over log of 1.5. Part three, we're going to simplify some expressions. So we'll get right into that. Um, simplify x squared plus 3x cubed minus parentheses 2x squared plus 1. Um, distribute the negative. So that's going to be x squared plus 3x cubed minus 2x squared minus 1. Combine like terms. x squared minus 2x squared is negative 1x squared. So that's 3x cubed minus x squared minus 1. Sometimes the expressions are harder to do by hand. So I have a shortcut I want to do with you for number 2. So what I would recommend on number 2 with multiple choice questions is put the original expression into Desmos. And then go through and look at the graphs of each, so we can zoom out so we can see what that graph looks like. Go through the other answer choices. So we have x cubed plus 27. We have x cubed minus 27. We have x cubed minus 9x squared minus 27x plus 27. And the same thing, but with some different signs. So what you can do on, on these problems is you can isolate one at a time. So if you know your original graph should look like this, then if you look at answer choice A, you see how it overlaps it, whereas B is different, C is different, and D is different. So the only one that actually is equivalent is going to be x cubed plus 27. So let's utilize our Desmos graphs. Graph, graph each in Desmos, and make this a little bit easier. If you're interested in knowing how to do that by hand, just check with me and I'll show you. Same thing with number three. You can do three the same way. So that's how we're going to do that one as well.
So we got our graph. And we'll check our other solutions. So x squared minus 3x, x cubed minus 3x squared plus 15x plus 8. There's the first one. And I'm just going to copy each one. change the signs and numbers. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just compare these, get rid of the ones that don't match, and let's take a look at what we got. So we got this graph here. It almost looks like a line, but it's not. Um, if you click on that, it's different. This one looks like it overlaps it. That one's different and that one's different. So it's gonna be this x cubed plus three x squared plus 27x plus eight. And again, graph, graph and Desmos. I'll be happy to work that out with you if you want me to. And number four, which function is equivalent to y equals x squared minus six x plus 10? This one we can do by hand, um, but you'd have to multiply it, you'd have to square that out and subtract one. So if I did that, I just used the complete and the square technique um, instead of multiplying all these out. Think about what the vertex would be. In fact, I can show you how to get the vertex and then you can write it in vertex form. So this, this is basically a quadratic function, x squared minus six x plus 10. And if you look at the vertex, it shifted right three and up one. So if it's going right three and up one, it should be that answer choice. And see how it matches up. So we don't have to match up every single one. We can just kind of sometimes graph it and get away with looking at where it shifts and note that from the graph. Same thing with this one here. We wanna write it in vertex form. So I said, get the vertex, see where that is, and then go from there. That vertex is negative two, negative 10. So it went left two, down 10, left two down 10 is actually gonna be that answer choice. And you can see they, they overlap each other. So get the vertex, then you can write it in vertex form. Same thing for this one, um, two X squared minus 12 X plus 25, let's get the vertex. There it is up there. That vertex is going to be 3, 7. So if it's got a vertex of 3, 7, it's going to go right 3, up 7. So minus 3 plus 7. And of course, it has a 2 in front. So that 2 is going to get put out the front. So we can verify that. And there you go. That concludes final exam review number three.